Hey guys, welcome to BTEC. Basil here, and this is the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium 4K display, 808 pixels per inch, 3 gig of RAM with a Snapdragon 810 under the hood. It's that processor we're really going to be putting through its paces. You've got a bunch of benchmarking applications on screen, and those are the ones we're going to run. Comparing it against some of the key competition, you can see the Nexus 6P from Huawei, the Sony Xperia Z5, and the Z5 Compact. Now, the reason this is probably going to perform worse than everything else is because the screen is crazy. Crazy sharp. 4K 808 PPI is going to put a little bit of extra pressure on that processor. So let's take a look at how it stacks up in Antutu. That Snapdragon 810 gets you 54,526. If we go into ranking, you can see it falls below some other full HD Snapdragon 810 devices. Um, but ultimately, it's respectable, just not mind blowing. So putting that down, um, and going back, you can see that 54,526 is by comparison to 54,686, so not all that much better. Putting them side by side, we can tap through on that, and we can actually see the areas that the Snapdragon 810 on the 6P outperformed the um, Sony Xperia specifically, and that includes in the UX multitask and runtime, or multitask mainly, it was scoring 2,000 or so, or 1,500 more. Um, CPU actually the CPU uh, performance of the Z5 Premium is higher, significantly so. Um, RAM performance is higher on the Huawei Nexus 6P, um, as is graphical performance and 2D graphics, 3D graphics though. Ah, it actually um, was able to do 3D graphics tests at uh, Quad HD on the 6P, but it only capped out at full HD graphics tests on the um, Xperia Z5 Premium. Interesting, so that probably suggests that and it hasn't been optimized to cater for 4K displays. So caps out at 1080p potentially might not be that. If you've got any thoughts, fire them in the comments section below. Um, as far as the storage goes, it's really quite similar with uh, storage IO uh, a few hundred more. Um, but ultimately, they are two very, very comparable uh, results. Like I said, how accurate that is based on optimizations of Antutu for the 4K display is yet to be ascertained. How does it stack up against its Ickle brother right here. I say ickle, it's hardly small, it's 5.2 inches, but by comparison, well, it kind of gets the floor wiped with it, if that's the correct use of the term, which it isn't, but who cares? 61,894, as you can see. And jumping into that ranking again, um, the real it's a very, very similar story. Multitask and runtime is much, much higher on the uh, Z5, um, um, as is CPU integer. Um, in fact, everything is just higher across the board on that. Um, ex yeah, everything's just higher. So putting that down and we can finally open up the Z5 Compact. Now the Z5 Compact is the benchmarking champion with that 720p display placing minimal strain on that Snapdragon 810 processor. You can see it benchmarks right near the top, right near the Samsung Galaxy S6. It's also a much, much smaller device, super dinky. Anyway, um, the comparison it really does showcase the UX performance is heaps, heaps better, way less pressure from that screen. Also CPU performance as well, uh, better across the board, um, everything is in fact uh, better um, in, yeah, everything, simple as everything is better. So putting that down, we can jump out of Antutu and we can jump into Base Mark OS 2. Um, so open that up on here, jump into results and you can see it scored 1,362. By, put, by contrast, the Nexus 6P scored a respectable 1885. Instantly with white on the display on both of these, you might be able to tell um, the viewing angles across both devices are quite different. The Nexus comes off as a lot warmer, um, less kind of blue huey. Um, you can customize the white balance in the Xperia Z5 Premium. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting. Off angle, the Nexus 6P retains uh, brightness levels much, much higher. But all this is for a different video. I'm going off topic. Base mark, you can see system performance is higher on the 6P as is memory performance. Graphics performance is interestingly higher on the Z5 Premium, um, whereas web performance is higher on the 6P. How about the uh, uh, Z5. Jump into results and 
Oh, that's a really, really unexpected one. So system performance is where it's let down, interestingly, significantly lower on this uh, Z5 when compared to the Z5 Premium. This is pre-update Z5 though, so that might have something to do with it. Maybe, let's take a look and see how things are on the post-update Z5 Compact. There you go, that's more like it. So the Z5 Compact scores 1,585, interestingly less than the um, 6p. So yeah, that's a really, really random one. Jumping out of base mark and let's take a look at the final benchmark which we're going to look at today and that is GFX Bench. The reason GFX Bench is so, so handy is because um, it does a couple of things. Obviously it tests it out in terms of hardcore graphics and that's something that people will definitely, definitely want to know if they are picking up a device with a 4K display. But it also has off-screen graphics tests which is handy to test pure processing power um, across devices with different screen resolutions. So if I jump out of that, open GFX Bench, might take a while for it to open, so I'll get it open across all the devices in the background while I am waiting. We can quickly jump in to see the tests done, high level tests, car chase. Um, in fact, there are probably some tests done on here which haven't been done on uh, the the Z, uh, 6P and other devices based on the screen resolution. So we can jump to the ones which have, so 1080p Manhattan off screen, for example, in Manhattan, 588 frames per second for the um, on-screen version, um, or 18 frames per second, so the Z5 uh, premium outperforms, um, whereas you get for off screen, um, um, off screen 999, 16 frames per second, off screen 17 frames per second. So interestingly, um, even off screen, the Z5 Premium outperforms the Huawei Nexus 6P in terms of gaming, which is very, very encouraging given the fact that that screen is gonna be pretty beautiful for gaming. Well, let's face it, both are. Um, taking a look at Manhattan off screen again, yep, yeah, it just outperforms it by a couple of frames um, and outperforms it again with the T-Rex tests too. So uh, we're not going to look at all the other tests but that's actually really really encouraging considering in my opinion this is one of the main competitors for this in terms of gaming specs and what they both have which is Asus front firing speakers. What this has which is even Acer especially when it gets Marshmallow and will be very very handy for gamers is expandability in addition to that 32 gig of onboard memory. Next up how how does the Z5 Premium compare against the Sony Xperia Z5, the little brother, or the littler brother, the Z5 Compact is a real little brother. So we can jump straight to Manhattan across both, and the Z5 Premium performs worse with on screen. So 19 frames per second on the Z5 versus 18 on the Z5 Premium. 18 frames per second also off screen versus 17 on the Z5 Premium, so nothing crazy noticeable, just one frame per second difference. Um, as far as the different resolution goes, you can see it 1794 by 1080, both devices performed relatively differently. 26 frames per second versus 24, though nothing mind-blowing again. Off-screen, 25 frames per second versus 24. Um, and the T-Rex performance is better um, on the Sony Xperia Z5 on screen, whereas off screen it's slightly worse. So this is kind of in line with what we would have expected given the fact that these two have the same amounts of RAM um, and the performance of the Sony Xperia Z5 will just fare that a little bit better because obviously on screen stuff has 1080p resolution to contend with versus 4K. Now let's compare it against the Sony Xperia Z5 Compact and you can see Starting with Manhattan to even the score, uh, the Z5 Compact unsurprisingly performs that little bit better. Um, 1,763 frames, so 28 frames per second versus 18 frames per second. Then 16 frames per second off screen versus the 17 frames per second off screen. Unsurprising again, this device has more RAM, maybe it's more um, catered to graphics, or maybe it's just a system like F fluctuation based on the fact that they're at different points in their life cycle in terms of application installs, it's Etc. Um, now let's taking a look at the additional uh, Manhattan test that isn't 1080p. Um, the, it runs at 720p on here, so that's native resolution, um, but it runs at um, um, 1794 and 1080. And there it's again unsurprising that the Xperia Z5 Compact wins out with that lower frame rate. Though off screen running at 1080 again, both of them 24 frames versus 22. With T Rex test, uh, very, very comparable 
comparable, 52 frames, 51 frames. Interestingly, or well, not surprisingly, sorry, off screen, 56 frames per second, whereas you've got 48 frames per second on the Z5 Compact. So very, very conclusive tests. Hopefully you enjoyed this rundown of how benchmarking applications perform across this crazy, crazy device with a crazy, crazy screen resolution. If you did, then make sure you click that thumbs up button. And of course, if you like BTEC in general, subscribe. That is how you're gonna stay on top of everything that we do. Thanks for watching.